Greetings, everyone. This is Steam Team Read WK, CC Trainer Ling, here to bring you another episode review from Season 6 of The Loud House. Today's episode is titled Small Blunder. First, we'll discuss the plot, and then my thoughts and critiques with my final score. So, let's get right into it. In this episode, Lily grows fed up with always getting overshadowed during her preschool show and tell, so she takes Lisa's shrink ray to impress her class, and she finally wins them over. However, a freak mishap causes the ray to accidentally shrink her and her classmates, and they have to to avoid getting attacked by a giant guinea pig while trying to make themselves big again. By working together, Lily successfully restores everyone back to normal, and the episode ends with Lily having another show and tell with what she assumes is just a simple box, but it's actually a teleportation box built by Lisa. Well, that concludes the plot of the episode, so now we come to my thoughts and critiques. I'm just going to be totally honest with you all right now, and I don't care how many people might disagree with what I'm about to say. This was, in my opinion, Lily's best episode of the entire series. It's best better than Dream a Lily Dream, even if she did have one of the most badass character moments on the show. It's better than Appetite for Destruction, an episode I've changed my opinion on and not for the better since I first watched and reviewed it. And it even surpassed Any Given Sunday, which for the longest time was the episode I considered her absolute best. On top of that, this episode handled Lily's character in a way that didn't give her some phoned-in secret prank side which made her look like a mini Luann when it's April Fool's Day, and it certainly didn't present her as a complete monster because she couldn't go to the bathroom due to all the parmesan she was eating. This episode presented her as the happy and lovable child she was always meant to be since the series premiere, and this time she got to do a lot more at her preschool compared to how little she did in the previous season. With this episode taking place following the time skip in season 5, this is the most dialogue she's had in the series as of late. She sounded a lot more comprehensible as opposed to previous episodes where she talked very little, and you could just barely make out what she was saying. That aspect is very important because given this episode's conflict, I couldn't see Lily doing what she did here if she was still an infant and couldn't properly communicate to anyone. While baby Lily had an ice cream seeking adventure in season 4 that ran the risk of being handicapped because she was incapable of talking to anyone, toddler Lily was actually capable of talking to everyone and that was important since she needed her class to help her get things back to normal. Do you really think baby Lily could pull off this episode's adventure the same way toddler Lily did? Maybe, but I severely doubt it given the circumstances. But speaking of those circumstances, the adventure Lily and her classmates went through was the biggest and most entertaining part of the episode. Everything they went through as tiny versions of themselves while everything around them was gigantic gave off some serious vibes similar to that of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I mean, that was pretty much the idea of what the writers were going for, and it was really fun. While those kids in the movie dealt with a giant ant, these preschoolers had to deal with a giant guinea pig one of the kids brought in for show and tell. But yeah, the mission to avoid tater tot and make their way across the room to the shrink ray was pretty epic. My favorite highlight was the Top Gun-inspired moment with Lily sporting some shades and flying in a toy airplane while her classmates worked the controls. The episode also did a great job of showcasing Lily's bravery, intelligence, and capability of being a good leader. She had no second thoughts about jumping out of a moving plane and onto the desk where the shrink ray was placed, and given her incredibly small stature, that was quite a death-defying leap. Let's also not forget how she was smart enough to remember the passcode to Lisa's bunker and how Todd can be easily swayed by candy. Because... reasons. She also kept her classmates from completely falling apart and took charge of the situation she created and followed through on a rescue plan without falling apart herself. Then again, all of this would have never happened had her siblings not put so much pressure on her when they talked about their own show-and-tell experiences. They used to get one-upped by their classmates the same way Lily was being one-upped by hers. She brought in something small and simple, mostly different variants of Blarney the Dinosaur toys, while everyone else brought in something bigger and way cooler than what she had. So you can't really blame her for feeling jealous and wanting to bring in something that would finally give her some superstar recognition. However, doing so led to both her and her classmates paying a literally big price, and Lily needed to get everything back to normal before they became guinea pig food. Eventually, Lily was able to get everyone back to their original height the same way she shrunk them, by shooting everyone with an energy beam that ricocheted off a mirror. She decided from then on that she didn't need to go out of her way to impress her classmates given what she just went through. Her next show and tell was just going to be what she assumed was a plain, ordinary, empty box, which I thought was a really interesting choice because of the unlimited imagination kids can have with those things. However, when Dr. Shuttleworth asked if the box could do anything, it could in fact do something. Teleport everyone out of the classroom and right into Lisa's bedroom. Well, hey, all innovations start with imagination. So Lisa's imagination resulted in this box coming into existence. That's the power of imagination. Overall, I cannot find
find anything negative to say about this episode. It was perfect for Lily's character following the time skip in season 5, her adventure with her classmates was fun and very exciting, and she realized at an early age that she didn't need to have the greatest thing in the world just to get everyone to pay attention to her, even if her feelings of being overshadowed were understandable. It may be a long shot to say, and I don't know if I'm going to be the only one to say this, but with how everything in the story played out and then came together by the end, I would say this was the best episode of season 6 at the time of this recording. That means it surpasses my score for the episode Driver's Dread, so I think you know where I'm going with this. With that said, I give Small Blunder a perfect 10 out of 10. Well folks, that concludes my review of Small Blunder. I will end this review with something I know is pretty irrelevant to the story, but it's still worth noting anyway. Dr. Shuttleworth is once again voiced by her original actor, Mindy Sterling. I was sort of surprised by this because I had assumed Alex Kazaris would be Shuttleworth's new actor following Appetite for Destruction. But like I mentioned in my review of that episode, and I don't mean any disrespect when I say this, but Alex's voice just doesn't fit the same way Mindy's does. Alex is still a great actor, don't get me wrong, but Mindy will always have the edge as THE voice for Dr. Shuttleworth, but as always, that's just my opinion. But anyway, as far as the rest of the episode goes, what did you guys think of it? Love it? Hate it? Something you would add? Change? Keep it as it is? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe to this channel for the latest Loud House content. That's going to do it for me, I'll catch you guys for the next video, but until then, this is Steam Team Breed WK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices.